My name is Allison Thomas. I'm Canon for Spiritual Formation and Rector for the School for Ministry and I work here at the Episcopal Church Center and also part-time at All Souls Episcopal Church in Point Loma. Um, I was a lawyer before I was ordained and um, I'd grown up going to the Episcopal Church. Like a lot of young people left when I was in college, uh, returned when I was in my 30s and I started going to St. Paul's Cathedral here in San Diego. And one day I was sitting in the front pew because I was going to be one of the lecturers and I was watching the priest set the table for the Eucharist and I got this overwhelming sense that I was supposed to be up there with them. And immediately I said, no, no, not going to do it, but God won. A lot of times people come to me thinking that they may be called to ordain ministry and you know I just find out a little bit about what their background is or what the nature of that pull is or that tug is because a lot of times to do what people feel like they need to do they don't need to be ordained. You don't necessarily have to have this piece of plastic around your neck. But is there something about being ordained that um, say if, you're, if you want to be a priest or you think you're being called to be a priest that you want to celebrate the Eucharist, that, then you do need to be ordained. Or some people, if they want to do certain types of chaplaincy, it's good if they're ordained because it gives them access to um, say to prisons, it's easier to get into a prison. But also, I just, I want to know um, how they perceive God moving in their life. That's, that's really the, the bottom place to start, or the foundational place to start. There's a lot of people who, who profess that they know what God is telling them to do or what God's about, um, who haven't really explored um, our history, our sacred writings, and um, I think we see a lot of that nowadays. And it's important that people really spend some time wrestling, for instance, with the Bible. One of the things we've learned is that you can do Bible study and you're going to learn some things about the Bible that are going to be that are going to surprise you, if not out and out shock you. And yet you can go then into a preaching class afterwards and you're going to use that same text very differently because you're going to see how your heart and your soul is speaking to you through it. And I think we only get to those places where we are willing to really learn and wrestle with um, who and what we are because it frees us up in the long run. Um, the best answer for me is somebody who's curious, somebody who wants to know more, wants to deepen not just their spiritual life, but also their knowledge. It could be somebody in the ordination process, it could be someone who just wants to do Bible study and is, is curious about uh, history of the church or wanting to learn more about pastoral care. But I really think being curious and open to the spirit are the two things that are most important. If people um, are wondering if they should take a class, what I usually recommend is that they audit. You know, if they're not sure they're up to um, the academic rigor, or if they want to do papers, or, or if they're even going to like it, you know, for a really minimal amount of money, you can audit any class and um, then get to experience it firsthand. Back in the old days, you used to have to get a bachelor's degree in order to get into a residential seminary because it was a master's program. Uh, the nice thing is for people in the school for ministry is that even if they haven't completed a university or college degree um, or don't have one, they can still take classes here and still graduate with the certificate. Um, so those things that used to be a bar perhaps to ordination or um, being theologically formed, those kinds of barriers are being taken away. Theological education is experiencing a profound shift. When I was going through the ordination process, I went away to a residential seminary, and that was really just about the only option. But nowadays, that's getting harder and harder for a variety of purposes. So some of us who've gone through the old school will look at what we're doing here and say, oh, it's not going to be rigorous enough, um, people aren't going to be as well formed. And what I want to say is that people are differently formed. 
To be able to go through this in the context of your day-to-day -day life allows you to see God in your day-to-day -day life that you never would otherwise.